What is up, fellow nerds, and welcome back to the Dapper Sniper Gaming Channel, and welcome back to How Do I Want to Do This? This is our series where we take a look at all playable options available to players in Dungeons & Dragons 5th Edition, then we rank them on a scale of 1 to 10, and either build them or fix them depending on how they rank. Now today, we are finishing up our talk on the Circle of the Stars Druid, and this is a fun one. We get to build one because it ranked very well. If you missed the ranking video, of course, make sure to check that video out first up in the iCard above right there for you. Make sure to watch that first so that we can... Uh, have all the details sorted out. I'm not gonna go into a ton more detail in this video, just because that's what that video is for, right? So, thank you for watching that. Now that you're back, that's great. We are going to jump into making a build today, but before we do that, make sure to leave a like on the video and subscribe if you haven't already. As you can see, most people who watch this channel are not subscribed, so please help us to reach our goal of 2,000 by the end of this year. We are on track, but I need your help to get there, of course. And then, make sure to ring the bell and share the video with all your friends. So the Stars Druid came very close to a perfect ranking, as you all learned in the video from earlier this week, but it's it's still very good. It's it's not quite perfect, at least in my in my ranking system, but it's very, very strong. It's very, very usable. It's very, very fun. And so I wanted to put a fun but powerful build in front of you today. Pretty simple as far as our multi-classing goes. Of course, we multi-class in almost every build we do on the channel. Um, normally, I also would say that if you ever want to be the strongest of these that you can be, go straight 20 levels of your class. But I'm going to present a very interesting option for multi-classing today. It's, uh, it's quite exciting, so I hope you guys are looking forward to that. Also, I want to address one thing before we jump in today is... I know a lot of you have seen the one D&D playtest material that just dropped yesterday. I have read over it a little bit and I'm going to be putting a lot of polls up and a lot of questions and that thing, that kind of thing to the community. And I'm trying to decide what type of video I want to do for it. Do you want a different video for each class presented and then one for feats? Do you want one big long video where we go through the entire thing? Would you prefer doing a live stream where everybody comes and talks about it at once? Just let me know. I am I am open to any of those options and I just, I wanna know what you guys think and I, I wanna have a discussion with you all about this because these changes are kind of game defining um, and, and I, wanna, I wanna talk about that. So that's enough of a preamble about all the new stuff. Let's start building this druid. Starting off, as always, we start with our race. And I didn't want to be super vanilla again today. You know, we're we're talking about a star's druid. We're talking about someone that looks to the sky for the power that is within them. And so I wanted to look elsewhere for my race. So no custom lineage, no variant human today. Although if this race that we're talking about today is not allowed at your table, that is my next option for you. So if you're not allowed to use what I'm about to suggest for you, then pick one of those and then take one of the feats that I suggest with uh, within this video. We are going to take the Thrykreen. I want it to look to the stars literally for our race and the Thrykreen seemed to be the best option that I could choose from. Why? Well, here we go. The Thrykreen are the bug people, and they get a number of awesome benefits. Number one, they are a monstrosity, which means whole person and charm person and that sort of thing that works on a humanoid, not going to work here. So you're immune to some big spells that normally would affect people like you. So that's really cool. We get a bonus to our AC, so we get an AC of 13 plus our dex modifier. That's a really nice buff, right? Because normally it would just be 10 and and we're not going to have that great of a dex. We also can't wear that great of armor because we're a druid and we can't wear any kind of metal. So this is an awesome, an awesome boost for us without necessarily having to wear any kind of crazy armor. Love having that as well. On top of this, we also can give ourselves advantage on stealth checks by changing the color of our chameleon-like form, I guess. It's it's very interesting. Um, we get dark vision. We also get secondary arms, which we can use to wield our weapon of choice, which in this case is going to be a club. A club has the light property, which means it can be wielded by one of our secondary arms. That frees up one of our primary arms to wield a shield and the other one to manipulate somatic components. There you go. We have zero need 
for Warcaster, which was the entire point of this build. I don't want to take Warcaster. We have things from second level that is going to give us a boost to our concentration, so we don't need it there. And this gives us no reason to have to worry about holding something in one hand and then having a shield in the other. We can comfortably hold a shield and a weapon should we need it, which we highly I highly doubt we're going to need it, but if you do, it's there, and then you can manipulate your somatic components with your free hand. Problem solved there. We also get telepathy, which is awesome, right? Telepathy is always going to be a good thing for scouting, whether it's for in battle, trying to reach somebody that's far away, anything like that. Telepathy is endlessly useful, so all of that being in one race is fantastic. As far as our stats go, of course, as always on this channel, we use a modified standard array. I know at your table, you might use point by, you might use rolled stats, you might use a regular standard array. Everybody does it differently, as I did a poll on this just a few days ago, and the answers were mixed, right? And actually, rolled stats was what won. I don't know how I'm supposed to plan for rolled stats when your stats are going to be different every time that you roll, so it's impossible to have any kind of consistency. So this is how I stay consistent with our modified standard array of 17, 15, 13, 12, 10, and 8. And we are going to place those with these stats. 17 with Wisdom, 15 in Constitution, 13 in Dexterity, 12 in Charisma, 10 in Strength, and 8 in Intelligence. Of course, if you're using a different system, you can just dump the bottom three. We don't need those. Technically, with Point Buy, you could take three 15s if you wanted to, and then add your three plus ones to Wisdom, Constitution, and Dexterity. That is an option for you, but I'm going to go with this method, of course. And so we're going to end up with an 18 Wisdom, a 16 Constitution, and a 14 Dexterity not too shabby to start off with. For our equipment, of course, like I mentioned, we're gonna take a club and a wooden shield, and then a druidic focus is always really, really nice to have, just so that you can actually cast your spells. But besides that, we really don't need a whole lot. We're pretty well set as it is. So let's start taking some levels. At level one, we are of course going to start out as a druid. Normally I start out with other classes and taking fighter dips and taking artificer stuff for the constitution, all that, no, I don't need it. We're starting Druid, and we're not going to go too crazy on this build for now. It'll get a little weird later, but it's totally fine. Of course, at level one, we get Druidic and spell casting. So we have our secret language of Druids that we can use to communicate with sticks and leaves and weird noises and all that good stuff. And it's very difficult for other people to recognize that it is a different language. Very cool, very cool. And of course, we get our spell casting ability here. So we are a wisdom based prepared class. So of course, we can swap all of our spells out every single day up to a certain number of them. And that's awesome, right? This means that I can suggest a lot more spells than what you're gonna have access to at any given time, but it also means that you can swap those out daily. So there are certain spells that I'm not going to mention on here. Doesn't mean you shouldn't use them. It means they're a little bit more situational. You can swap those out every day. So if the situation arises that you would rather use a different spell that's not on this list, do that because those situations will absolutely come up. As far as our cantrips go, I'm going to look at Druidcraft, Shapewater, Shillelagh, and Thorn Whip. Of course, we don't need guidance on this one because we're going to pick that up through our subclass, so that's worth skipping, and it's going to be really nice to pick that up here in just a second. For our first level spells, we're going to take things like Absorb Elements, a really nice defensive spell, Cure Wounds, which is huge. We definitely want healing in conjunction with our Chalice feature. We get Entangle, Fairy Fire, Goodberry, again, comboed with our healing features, Healing Word, and Thunder Wave, of course. All of these are nice. Thunder Wave is optional, but it's a good get off me option if you are to get surrounded by anything. It's not a bad option to have in your back pocket. At Druid 2, we of course get Wild Shape, and this is what allows us to turn into the form of a beast. For right now, the CR has to be one quarter or lower, unfortunately, but we can be a wolf. It's a decent option. It's one of our best options net right now, actually, and it gives us a little bit of extra HP to work with. The wolf, of course, has pack tactics, which we can make use of, which is really cool. So definitely think about using this. I like it a lot for scouting purposes, for blending in with certain animals that are out there should you need to. It's nice. It's a nice feature. However, as far as combat prowess goes, it's really not the best on this subclass. We don't get any features that help it out. In fact, all of our features help out 
a different ability, which is our starry form, which we'll talk about here in just a second. We also get our subclass here at level two, and we pick up our star map. Our star map now can be used as our druidic focus, which is great. So we have a free hand for that, which is awesome. And we of course pick up guidance and guiding bolt, which are both fantastic spells to have around with us. And you should definitely spam those because they are really, really good. As far as our starry form goes, we can use a use of our wild shape and assume a different form based on one of three constellations. We of course went into great detail on this on Tuesday, so I'm not gonna do that here, but chalice and uh, dragon are going to be the ones that we're gonna be focusing on most often. If you would like to see another build on this that focuses on Archer, I definitely could do that. Um, I have I have some ideas for an Archer based build, but for today's build, that is not what we are going to be doing. And of course, we get Wild Companion as well, should you need a temporary familiar. At level three, we get no features, but we do get second level Druid spells. And we're gonna pick up things like Bark Skin, which could help with our AC. Enlarge Reduce, Healing Spirit is a really nice one to have on this subclass. Uh, we get Heat Metal, Hold Person, Lesser Restoration, Moonbeam, Pass Without Trace, and Spike Growth as well. All really fantastic options. At Druid 4, we of course get an ASI or a feat, and we also get our Wild Shape Improvement, which we'll talk about first. Our Wild Shape Improvement allows us to not only go up to a CR of one half, but it also allows us to be able to swim with whatever it is that we are using. Of course, if you don't know what to do for a wild shape, I of course have my generic druid guide up there in the icon above right there for you, in which I go into great detail about all kinds of options at different levels. And so make sure that you check that out if you ever don't know what to pick. There are several really nice options out there and that guide will help you of course with that. Now for our feet. Our feet here is going to be a bit of an odd choice, but I want to do this in a strange way that's going to make a little bit more sense later. We're going to take Resilient Constitution right here. I know what you're saying, but Dapper, you're taking a half feet that leaves you with an odd number constitution. Why would you do that? And the answer is, you'll see. Uh, because right now we're still getting the benefit of our proficiency bonus being added onto our constitution saving throws, and this affects our concentration checks as well. This is a welcome boost to our concentration checks that we should never be dropping. Every little boost that we can get to our constitution is going to be awesome because that is two more damage that we have to take in order for it to even be possible that we drop concentration. And that's huge, right? I love that. And resilient constitution is one of the fastest ways that we can do that. And yes, we're leaving an odd number here, but we'll fix it later. Don't you worry. And of course, we also get cantrip versatility, but I'm not planning on using that at all. At Druid 5, we get no features, but we do get third level Druid spells. And of course, Aura of Vitality is at the top of my list. I normally do not recommend this spell. It's not normally at the top of my list, but with all of the buffs that we are going to be getting with this subclass and what we get through multi-classing, it's a no brainer. And it's one that I would really consider bringing every single day. I think it's just that good. And I think you're going to be doing enough of a passive heal to make it really difficult to take out your party, especially if you've got somebody like a barbarian going around with resistance to everything. Yeah, you're gonna make it almost impossible to kill that character with all of this healing. It's really nice. On the offensive side, of course, we have Erupting Earth, Plant Growth, and Sleet Storm, and of course, for support, Revivify. At Druid 6, we get Cosmic Omen, and this is what allows us to actually use something similar to the new Bardic Inspiration feature, which I thought was very strange when I read this over and the timing was very weird. So if you've read the new Bardic Inspiration, it is actually based on a reaction now in the one D&D playtest. And wouldn't you know it that the cutting words from the Bard already does the same thing. And so this is your wheel and woe, right? It's the exact same thing that a third level lore bard is doing in one D&D, which I thought was very interesting that we are now doing that as a sixth level druid. So very interesting. I just thought that would be cool to point out. Um, but basically you roll a die at the beginning of the day and depending on what you roll, you either get to add or subtract from rolls as a reaction for the rest of the day, at least so many times per day, which is cool, which, which is really, really fun. A very powerful ability as well. 
then we kind of take a turn. Uh, now that we have we've looked up at the stars for a lot of things, we're now going to look up maybe slightly to the left of the stars as we find religion. And we are going to take some cleric levels here. Now, cleric is a huge boost to our ability to just be effective as a druid. It's interesting that the two wisdom classes, yes, they work well together because they both are wisdom, but they also have a lot that's similar that end up helping each other without necessarily stepping on the toes of one another, which is really, really nice. This is a very basic multi-class here, but it's also really effective, so I really can't turn it down. So here at Cleric 1, we of course get our spell casting, which we'll come back to, and we get our subclass right off the bat at level 1. I'm going to go with the Life Cleric. The Life Cleric is your clericiest cleric out there, and it allows you to just boost your healing even more. If we weren't boosting our healing enough with Chalice, we're boosting it even more now. So this is the time to really be swapping back and forth between Chalice and Dragon, depending on your situation. And I mean, if you're in the back doing all of your healing and you don't really need to worry about your, your dropping your concentration, again, that's why we took Resilient Constitution so that you can kind of rely on that sometimes, then you are going to be pumping out so much healing that it's going to be really difficult to keep up with it at least if you're pumping it out on a large basis as we get things like mass healing word and mass cure wounds and that sort of thing. It's really, really nice. So we get bonus proficiency. We get access to heavy armor here. Can we use it? That sounds like a question for your DM. So again, druids typically cannot use armor made of metal. However, I have said in previous videos, of course, if your DM says that it's okay, that when you face an Umber Hulk or a purple worm or something with a really thick shell, to see if your artificer or see if a local myth will work on said shell or whatever and make you some heavy armor that is appropriate for a druid. I think that's fine personally, and that's something that you can explore. Do I think that it's necessary? No. Am I going to assume that you're using it? No, but it's an option for you should you want to go the heavy armor route. Of course, we also get Disciple of Life, and that is really why we're here, because it boosts our ability to heal. Of course, if you haven't seen my guide on the Life Cleric, I do have one of those up in the iCard above right there for you to check out as well. So make sure to watch that if you have any questions about this subclass. Let's jump back to our spell casting though before we move on. And we get, of course, our cantrips here. Sacred Flame, Spare the Dying, Thaumaturgy, and Toll the Dead are all really great options. Of course, we've got a couple of more offensive options. We've got Spare the Dying as a support option and Thaumaturgy as a utility option to kind of do whatever it is you want that Druidcraft couldn't already do. At level one spells, we get, of course, Bane and Bless. Both of those are really good options. Personally, I think Bless is better, but Bane can come into play. And of course, this can stack with your Cosmic Omen. So if you get Wheel, maybe it'd be a good option to bring Bless and stack. If you get Woe, maybe it'd be a good idea to bring Bane and stack that as well. Or you could have one of each, whichever one you want to do. Of course, Command and Inflict Wounds are also really good ones. And one thing to keep in mind is that there is a lot of double up over the Cleric and the Druid list. This is not necessarily a bad thing. What this does is it allows you to take a lot of the burden that has been on the Druid list for all of your spells and move that over and share it with the Cleric list because you still get to prepare a number of Cleric spells, right? So take some of the ones that have been on that Druid list, put them on the, over on the Cleric list, and then that frees you up a bunch of prepared slots on your Druid list for spells of higher level or maybe more low level spells that the Cleric list did not have access to. So that is the way to do that and definitely use that to your advantage. It allows you to get a lot out of these two spell lists, even with how few levels we have in them so far. At Cleric 2, yes, we are still going. We are going to get our channel Divinity, of which we have three options of use. Number one, we get Turn Undead, which can literally turn undead in the opposite direction. We get Harness Divine Power, which allows us to regain spell slots, which is really awesome. And we get Preserve Life, which is a nice little heal, but it does not combo with our ability to heal using a spell slot. So. Keep in mind, this is not going to be buffed by the chalice form. It's not going to interact with that because it does not use a spell slot. So 
Just keep that in mind, it is, it's its own thing. At level three in Cleric, we get no features, but we get second level spells. The reason I'm going this deep into Clerics right now is because I want to be able to have something to do on our bonus action. Yes, we will be casting Healing Word whenever we can. However, once we've wild shaped, we have a free bonus action most of the time. Wouldn't it be nice to have something like Spiritual Weapon just to add a little bit of extra damage on top of what we want already without getting in the way of our concentration? That's what I'm looking for especially. If Spiritual Weapon was concentration, I would not consider this, but because it is not, it is very helpful. The other thing that's nice is we also get Prayer of Healing, which also does work with the buff, and we get Aid, which technically I would rule that it does not because you're not restoring hit points, you are adding hit points to the maximum. So technically that probably would not combo with any of your other features, that's just how I would rule it. Talk to your DM, but I would imagine that your DM probably will say no to aid getting the boost. But if so, then more more power to you, but probably wouldn't fly at my table. Um, then once we have this, once we have spiritual weapon under our belt, I think it's okay to move back to Druid because I really want Twinkling Constellations. It's just so good to have that extra D8 on top of everything, especially with a few more buffs that we're going to get later. It's just so nice to have this, so I'm going to now rush for that. At Druid 7, we of course get our fourth level Druid spells, and we get Charm Monster, Polymorph, and Wall of Fire, among many other very useful spells. At Druid 8, we get another feat, and on top of that, we get another Wild Shape improvement. I'm not really concerned about putting off our Wild Shape improvements, because like I said, we're not really using Wild Shape all that much on this build. I would focus on using Wild Shape for our starry form, personally. But should you want to use regular Wild Shape, you can now fly and go up to a CR1. So the Giant Vulture is fine, the Owl is fine for scouting, but as far as in combat, you're going to be kind of disappointed, to be honest, because number one, you can't cast spells. Yes, you can concentrate on them, so of course you could cast Heat Metal on somebody wearing armor and then turn into a horse and run away. Probably don't do that to your DM without talking to him first. But you, you know, that is an option out there for you if you want it. But ultimately, I think you're gonna get a lot more use out of your starry form. There's just a lot more going on with it, and it's just stronger, in my opinion. So I would use it for that. That's just me, but should you want it, there's an improvement. Druid 8, though, we get another ASI or a feat. And I'm going to take a very strange feat because I like strange builds and I like doing the weird stuff. We'll take a slightly reflavored version of Gift of the Gem Dragon. Gift of the Gem Dragon, of course, was introduced in Fizzband's Treasury of Dragons and is a kind of underwhelming feat, in my opinion. It's not great. It's just not, right? It is a half feat, so we get to boost our wisdom up to an odd number. Again, whatever. But we also get a telekinetic reprisal. We get to deal some force damage back whenever we're hit. I think this is fun, right? We get to deal a little bit of force damage back. It is a strength saving throw, which is probably not gonna be the best for a lot of creatures, which is good. And it's based on our wisdom. So we already have a good wisdom. We're at a 19 wisdom right now. So we have a plus four bonus. We will eventually get that up to a plus five. So our save is pretty good. And it's just a little bit of extra damage on a reaction. So again, it's not gumming up our action economy really. And that's what I like to see. I like being able to just nickel and dime a little bit, but the big thing is that it works because we're a Thrykreen, right? Thrykreen are known for being telepathic, and this allows us to have an excuse. So I would not word this as getting Gift of the Gem Dragon. I would word this something having to do with your Thrykreen heritage, and that would make way more sense to me in this case, but that's just me, but mechanically, that's what we're doing. At Druid 9, we don't get any features, but we do get 5th level spells, and of course, Greater Restoration, here you are, as well as Mass Cure Wounds. Gotta have that one on this subclass. Finally, Druid 10. It only took us 13 levels, but we're here. Druid 10, we get Twinkling Constellation, so we now add a D8 to both our Archer feature, which we're not using, and we also add it to our Chalice feature, which is really, really nice. So we also get to heal extra on top of everything, and we can now fly when we are in our Dragon form, which is awesome. 
In addition to all of that, which is the big reason why we're here, is the ability to swap on a whim without the use of any kind of action, bonus action, reaction, anything. We can swap between each of these at the beginning of our turn. That is what makes us so effective, is being able to swap on a whim between each of these forms it's gonna be awesome, right? It really allows us to have the versatility that we normally would not have access to, and it's awesome. I absolutely love it. Now, next level is a difficult decision. Now that I have locked down Twinkling Constellations, I want to go back to Cleric. Number one, because there is an ASI or feet sitting right there. And I really want to grab that because there is another thing that I want to do. However, there are also sixth level druid spells also staring me in the face. Among those is heal. And heal is too good for me to pass up. So we're going druid 11. Druid 11 gives us sixth level spells. I'm only gonna mention heal, but there are a few others in there that you should think about. Heal gives you a flat 70 of hit points to heal. However, this is a leveled spell that you are casting to restore hit points. Therefore, it gets the boost. So right now with Chalice, we are adding a 2d8 plus our wisdom modifier. Plus we're adding a flat eight from the two plus spell level from being a life cleric. So right now we are healing with heal for 2d8 plus 82 hit points with one casting of this. That's kind of insane. And the thing is, we are multi-classed in two full casting classes. Therefore, we have a lot more slots than what we actually have spells. We can upcast this if we want to. We can eventually cast this as a ninth level spell if we wanted to. Do I recommend it? Probably not, but you could. If you really want to just absolutely tank somebody up, this is a way to do it. And it's absolutely amazing how much you can heal with just this and our spell slots are doing fine like i said we're way ahead on spell slots from where we are right now and it's going to only go up from there which is awesome so yeah heal is a must bring i would prep that every single day and definitely use it when you need it now cleric four cleric four we get an asi or a feat and i'm just going to go plus one wisdom plus one constitution for a 20 and an 18 respectively this is fantastic. So we have proficiency in constitution saving throws. We have a plus four to our constitution modifier. All of this is just means that we have to take a ton of damage at once in order to lose concentration. And that feels really nice, right? We've got to take a ton of damage. And honestly, that's fine. Because then on the next turn, once we have tanked the hit, we can swap over to Chalice, heal off our friends, we can heal ourselves up, and we're gonna be even better at healing ourselves up in the future as we go on, and it's just awesome. We are a very durable build, and we are also very good at healing others. If we weren't durable enough at Druid 12, we are gonna take the tough feat because you can never have enough HP. I wanted more HP on this build because we are going to be kind of tanky here at these late levels. And tough is one of the easiest ways to tank here, especially once we have our full of stars feature at level 14, which spoiler alert, we're going to get eventually. Now I wanna go back to Cleric. I know we've been swapping back and forth here these last few levels, but I think it's important to get them in this, in this order because tough needs to come online as early as possible, but it's more important to max out our wisdom so that our saving throws are as good as they can be, so that our attack rolls are as good as they can be, all that good stuff, that's what I want. So now we get Cleric 5, we get Destroy Undead up to a CR 1 half, don't care, you're probably never gonna use that. Given how high level you are, I doubt that's ever gonna come up. What might come up though is Beacon of Hope. Beacon of Hope is actually a really nice low level spell on the Cleric list that allows you to do several things. Number one, it gives you a boost to wisdom saving throws. Hello Barbarian. Barbarian definitely would love this. So. That's nice, not the best thing though. You also get help with death saves. That's good, that's really good actually, and I would definitely use that. And on top of that, whenever a healing spell is cast, you heal the maximum amount. Meaning that instead of that 2d8 on top of the heal spell, that's just a flat 16. 
on top of everything else that you're adding to it. That's pretty great. Um, that's pretty great. It, it, it takes out the ability to roll two ones. And I absolutely love that as well. On top of this, we also get another interesting option in life transference. Life transference is one that I normally wouldn't recommend, but because we have the tough beat and because we have all of these bonuses to healing, I think that it's more than worth it. Being able to take a little bit of damage on yourself, but be able to heal back double that is huge. And I really think that it's worth it taking off some of our hit points, which we have a lot of because we have the tough beat but we can throw all of that healing back at our friends. And technically we can also give some of that back to us with our chalice form as well, which is also really, really cool. So we can either use the extra to heal ourselves, or we can use it on top of the healing on life transference, which is great. I love that. And it's going to get even better here in a minute, but we also get mass healing word. Make sure to not forget about that one. Cleric six, we get our channel divinity up to a second time per day or per rest rather. I don't care. It's not that useful because we don't have enough cleric levels to really make it all that great, but it's there as a backup option if you want it or for that. I would use it for harness divine power personally, but that's just me. Then we get blessed healer. So now we passively heal ourselves when we heal someone else. That's also great, right? And this is what I wanted. I wanted to be the ability to be able to heal others very effectively, but also to heal ourselves very effectively and get all of the boosts from Chalice. And we're getting a huge boost to this, whether it's for other people or whether it's for us. It keeps us alive. It keeps our friends alive. And it's just an awesome system that's really difficult to break, in my opinion. And I really, really love that. Now, I could have continued and gone on with Cleric and gone up to Cleric 8 and gotten an ASI or a feed and gotten all this other blah, 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 blah. Full of Stars is two levels away. And wouldn't you know it, we have two levels left. You better believe that's where we're going with this. At Druid 13, level 19 overall, we of course get seventh level spells. Things like Draconic Transformation, Firestorm and Symbol are all nice. Of course, Draconic Transformation is not as useful on this build because we can already get a, a flying speed with the Dragon uh, Constellation. But should you be focused on Chalice, this is another way to get a flying speed. So we can fly pretty much anytime we want. However, I probably would be focusing a lot of my uh, concentration on Aura Vitality. Personally, I think that's our best use of it but that's just me. And finally, level 20, Druid 14, we get Full of Stars, where when we are using our starry form, just like the Barbarian, we have resistance to bludgeoning, piercing, and slashing damage. So that is our build for today. I hope you guys enjoyed. Let me know what you think down below. Before we end the video, of course, we have our honorable mentions as always, and let's go ahead and take a look at those really quickly. For our other race options, I took a look at one other option from the Spelljammer series, and that is the Autonome. The Autonome is a really cool robot, again, getting us out of the uh, hold person and all of that good stuff because it is a construct. You also can heal with the mending spell, which is huge. Um, but for flavor, I think it really worked out as well. Um, it's just saying that you have this, this cosmic maker and you've just kind of come from nowhere, or you have a maker that you're trying to get back to in the stars or something like that. I think that's really, really cool. And you get a number of benefits there. Um, my favorite backup though is the Loxodon. The Loxodon is such a cool option. Number one, you get a trunk and why would you not want that? Right. Uh, you get the trunk. You also get a bonus to your AC, similar to how the Thrycreen gets. And that's very useful, right? Having a bonus to your AC is nothing to scoff at when you're looking at a druid that gets very little in the form of armor options. Because yes, you get decent proficiencies, but you do not get to wear metal. And that's kind of what most armor is made out of. So you've got to put in a little bit more effort. This allows you to at least skate by for a little while and have an okay armor class. I mean, we start out with what? A 17? Because we have 13 plus two in dex plus two from the shield. So, I mean, that's respectable. That's a very respectable AC to start out with. So 
I like that. I think that's plenty. I think that's really good. Next up, let's look at the other options for classes that we could have gone with. And I wanted to go with the Order Cleric, first of all. This is probably more if I was going to do the Archer build, personally. But what this does is when you cast a spell that targets an ally, that ally can then make an attack. This is helpful because we're going to be targeting our allies a lot because we're healing them, right? This would allow a lot of bonus attacks for our Barbarian, for our Fighter, for our Martial Rogue, for any of those that are up there in the face of somebody. This is going to give them an extra attack that they normally wouldn't have access to. Especially think about this for the Rogue, right? That's another sneak attack chance. That's huge, right? And, and you're healing them at the same time. That's awesome. It's a great way to break the action economy and deal a ton of damage. So yeah, it's just, it's an option that that's out there. Of course, Peace and Twilight Clerics, of course, are also another great option that's out there. Um, more so Peace Clerics, in my opinion. But yeah, I mean, the ability to just have basically Bless on steroids going all the time is kind of huge. Um, and then, of course, the Twilight Sanctuary would be good for adding temporary HP on top of all of the regular HP that we're healing. Um, so all really good options there. And then, of course, the Clockwork Soul Sorcerer also is nice, too, because this goes more so with our Cosmic Omen. Our Cosmic Omen, of course, allows us to buff or nerf certain roles. The Clockwork's the Clockwork Soul Sorcerer actually allows us to get rid of advantage and disadvantage. So same kind of deal, but working together, this can take a very favorable situation for an enemy or a very unfavorable situation for an ally and completely turn it around. And I think that that's kind of huge. As far as feet options, I took so many feats on this that I really don't have a lot um, Fate Touched is a nice option for giving us a get out of jail free card with something like Misty Step. That's one of the big ones for me. Um, and then of course you could take something like Silvery Barbs on there as well. It, it's totally optional though. I, I really like the ones that I took here today, especially finding a use for Gift of the Gem Dragon. I've been trying to figure out how to use that in a build for so long. And I think this is an okay use of it. Is it a busted feat? No, not at all. But I think it's fun and it really fits the theme of what we were going for on this build. So I think it works. So that is all for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed. Of course, next week we are covering the Wildfire Druid and that's it for Druids. Then we are moving on and that is exciting. That is absolutely exciting. I am very much looking forward to it. And if you are as well, Make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss when we do that. And make sure you've liked the video, of course, and share the video with your friends. Tell everybody about it. It's very nice to uh, to see all the growth that we've gotten on the channel. It's it's awesome. And of course, let me know down below what you would like to see as far as one D&D speculation content. There's a lot to talk about. And so I could make one big video or I could make a bunch of small videos or we could hang out in a live stream, whatever you all want to do. I, I just I would love to know what it is you all would like to see. Until next time, stay safe out there. Stay healthy. We'll see you later. Bye bye.